Hi, we're here with Michael. He's part of the R2 Builders Group, and this is a droid he built here, and we're going to ask him a few questions about it. This is this really is amazing. Thank you. And uh, it's remote control. Why don't you? He's got some automated functions that are disabled for just being able to control them in the con, but usually he'll be autonomous outside of a convention. So how autonomous do you mean by autonomous? Um, he has proximity sensors, he can move around, he has his sounds, his head will turn, um, kind of just lives on his own. That's incredible. So how long did it take to build this? And did you start from scratch or? Uh, started from scratch. This is about three years in the making, mostly on the body work. Um, this is all aluminum. So every part on here is aluminum. It's all CNC machined, custom parts. Uh, the blueprints and information on parts and how to make parts is available in our club. It's free to join our two builders group. Um, there's different levels that people are building. This is the most expensive way to go, getting the all aluminum parts. Uh, you can see back here behind me, they got some different plastic options where people have plastic and resin parts. He's got a fiberglass dome on his. Um, so, so in the group, I mean, did you machine it? Do you have the CNC or is it kind of a collaborative effort? Or how does that work? Of collaboration in the group. I actually build a lot of parts myself um, and provide some for the group. Um, but a lot of these parts, there's guys who will do a run of parts, build about 100 pieces once a year. Now, is this the first one you built, or where did you start? What was your starting point? I started building an R2-D2. And so I have an aluminum dome similar to that that's finished. Um, he shares the same body as this guy. So when I want to dress them up and switch it up, these are actually vinyl stickers that I stick on here and here, and then I can swap out the dome and make them R2 again. And so what exactly is, is running him? I mean, you've got to have batteries and gears and all kinds of stuff in there. Lots of batteries, lots of gears. These are actually all wheelchair right, motors right, in the feet. He weighs about Trek, somewhere man. between 150 and 200 pounds. Uh, so that's some serious weight. Now, are, th are, are any of these cameras, or what are the, what are the functions of these things? Uh, there's a camera in this one that's deactivated right now. Some of these will light up. Um, they're kind of set to random, so they come on just every once in a while. Uh, these are people lenses work the best for this. These are peephole lenses from a door. Um, there's a lot of fun different parts. This is actually from a like a 1970s record player. So I asked earlier before we started rolling that does he spark? Now is that a feature that you that you did build? Or? Um, I do have that feature. He's got a zapper arm that's actually connected to a taser so he'll shoot the uh, the blue sparks shooting across um, and that's a part that I did and I provided to the group but I have disabled for the comp for safety reasons obviously reasons I didn't even have it hooked up in case there were any issues so your group now where are you based I'm in I'm in Orem, Utah, but the group is international. And so there's members, you know, I work together with a lot of guys in Sweden and Germany and France and Australia and Japan, it's just all over the US. Uh, and where do people go if they want to be part of this? Um, we have a website, astromech.net. It's free to join the club and it's extremely helpful. Everyone's really great at helping people get started and pointing people in the right direction to get started building a building a droid. This is just embarrassing radio control. Um, I'm working with a guy in uh, San Francisco right now to build a custom controller that kind of fits in one hand to be a little more discreet. There's a lot of functions on here that I don't need to use and it's heavy to carry around. Mostly in the convention I'll just working with one hand anyway it kind of takes away from the magic of 
having him run around when seeing a guy with a big remote control. Yeah, that's true. So are you working on uh, propulsion? I'm going to pass on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I've got enough problems keeping them on the ground. Now, do you make and sell these, or is it generally just, just for yourself or for your own hobby? I do, I do some of the parts that I sell to the, to the group only. All, everything's non-profit. No one's allowed to make any profit selling any R2 parts. And that's our, our club standard. If you break those rules, you get kicked out of the club. How did you mill this? How did you spin, did you spin it? This is spun. It's spun, CNC machined out the panels. And a lot of sanding. So do you uh, spin the R2 domes as well? Um, I don't spin the domes. There's a couple of guys, Chris and Darren, they're in Ohio, and they do a run of those every year. And they were they actually, spun well? they are spun. It's amazing. And so a lot of these parts, we've, the club's been able to have access to the Lucasfilm archives. Allowed us to go in, take measurements. Oh, great! Um, and so, a lot of our parts are extremely screen accurate. So, are there any features? I mean, I joked about the propulsion, but are there any features that you have plans for that that aren't yet in existence? Um, there are parts that I've been working on that I have ready to go. Um, on the body, I have a gripper arm that comes out that works, a CPU arm, a saw blade that comes out of one of the doors. Um, my R2 dome has all the panels open up. There's a periscope and a life form scanner and a thing that kind of holds up a, a lightsaber as well as a fire extinguisher that shoots out smoke from the side. So this, in a, this seems more authentic than the R2 on Star Wars. Uh, the, the R2s on Star Wars are pretty much junk. If you look at them close, the quality is really shoddy, and most of them didn't work. Um, and it's funny to go back if you some of the documentation of the scenes where they actually had to like tie a rope to the bottom of them and just drag them. In fact, this is the, this is the R5D4, which is the the astromech when Luke and his uncle are buying 3PO and R2 at the first time, they buy this one and he starts to come out and, and burst into flames and they're like, what are you trying to do? That one actually, they could not get him to go in the sand. So that's when they just, they tied a rope at the bottom and they just pulled him on out with a rope to shoot the scene of him coming out and breaking down. So cost wise, what? <laughs> price tag on this, <laughs> Beautiful model here. What are we talking? I have about. Yeah, this is actual cost. Cost, right? I have about a thousand dollars into this dome here, which doesn't do anything. Um, my R2 dome, I have about four thousand dollars into just that dome. Um, the body, we're looking at body with motors and drives, another five to six thousand dollars. Now, are these the droids we're looking for? This is probably not the droid you're looking for on a budget. <laughs> That's pretty quick. So, the new Star Wars, have they contacted you? Are they going to be using your stuff? They probably won't be using my stuff unless they use some of the, like, some new accessories. I have a... Um, a periscope that I've done for R2 that I've been running for the past couple years that is it's it looks it's screen accurate to the the dimensions of the one they used only the quality they're CNC machined they have you know 150 lumen spotlight in the front they're they're what the movie prop was trying to look like to be well, this is cool. I mean, this is something, honestly, that will be around for, I don't know, potentially a thousand years, really. I hope <laughs> love me. 
Yeah, I think it will. This will be this will be in the uh, ancient American History Museum. I bet. <laughs> my best friend. <laughs> well, it was nice meeting you. Thank yes. you for your time. Thank you. My name is Doug Atwood. Part of the R2 Builders, yep, it's a nationwide club. I'm also part of the 501st, a member of the 501st Legion, which is the bad guy Star Wars costuming group. And, uh, and, and, and I've done Rebel Legion stuff as well, the good guy side, but uh, yeah, I, I love having R2. It's much more comfortable than wearing Stormtrooper armor and kids love him, so. Uh, this is a, a dip, completely different approach to building a droid from, from this, the, the first one you saw. This is all machined aluminum, you know, beautiful. This one's all styrene with a little wood in the feet. Uh, the, the, yeah, with some resin cast parts. The, uh, the R2 Builders Club has plans that you can download. You have them printed out full size, like at Office Max or somewhere. And you just start cutting plastic and cut and glue and cut and glue and you, you stack up to build the body and then put a skin on it. The, the dome is a, a vacuum formed plastic and then they send them to a laser cutter and have all the panels cut out with the laser. Yeah, it is, tr yeah, yeah. So it's all styrene plastic, uh, much lighter. His 170 plus pounds, mine's about 85 pounds. Um, I bought a lot of the parts used from other members of the club who were upgrading to aluminum, so I got some good deals here and there. Uh, so I've got, right, right, yep. So I've got 900 to 1,000 in mind versus, you know, the 4,000, 8,000, 12,000 that you can get. Um, but I cut a lot of corners and I scratch built everything I possibly could. So I, I quit counting at 300 hours. But they have a standard dimension for every part. So if a member of the club says, hey, I'm going to do a run of vents, if it's Builders Council approved, you know they'll fit no matter who they're coming from. And so that makes it a lot easier. You know, I can buy those vents and from that guy and I can buy those hollow projectors from that guy and everything will work. So that makes it a lot easier. The, the cutting of the plastic, you know, to, to, to cut, because I started with two four foot by eight foot sheets of, of styrene plastic. And to cut that all out, it's a mess. The stuff gets static charged when the saw blade goes through it, it sticks to you, you take it through the house. My wife was ready to kill me. You know, so that's probably, and, and just, I glued my fingers together, I don't know how many times, I can't even count anymore. So, you know, that's kind of, it, it's just tedious. It's time consuming work. How do you work um, the controls? What what sort of uh, setup do you have? It's just a, just a uh, standard, like air, radio controlled airplane remote control. Use the standard receiver in it, which hooks to a couple off the shelf uh, motor, motor controllers that are built to design, built to, uh, control heavier duty motors and and it's a pretty simple setup it knows what you know you flip a switch on it and tell it you want to do tank drive with one one stick and and it knows how to control the motors and everything so it, it was pretty simple there's a wiring diagram posted on the site for the company that made the speed controller and wired it up and, and off i went so so, so if people wanted to uh, get in contact with you or the group how would they do it you know the easiest way is to go to astromech.net uh, that's the R2, or they can just Google R2D2 Builders Club, they'll find it. Um, and that's the worldwide club, and we have discussion forums on there. They can sign up for the, for the message boards and introduce themselves. There's an introduce yourselves here thread, and, and there's a, there's a separate, separate uh, forum on styrene building or aluminum building, and, and there's a wiki page there that yeah, describes what some of the part definitions are and the names of the parts and all that. That's the best way to get started. Lots of research before you jump into it. Thank you for your time. It's really cool to meet you. Hey, you're welcome. It's nice to meet you. Thank you.